Addiction Center and Addictions 911. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Living Clean. I'm your host, Glenn Allen. Tonight on the program, well, open lines. Open lines for alcohol, drugs, and more importantly, tonight we're going to be talking about the importance of aftercare and relapse prevention. Um, those two things, it's one thing to go to treatment because uh, you have the safety net of being in treatment. But when treatment ends, when you get out on your own, when you have aftercare or you're going to go to uh, self-help groups, uh, it's so important to set yourself up uh, and make sure that you don't fail. Set yourself up to succeed. And we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about a thing called a pink cloud. Because when you come out of recovery, or out of uh, treatment, I should say, uh, there's a lot of people out there that are going, oh, I'm fixed. And, and sometimes you, you form poor habits and uh, you, success, uh, you set yourself up to maybe fail. So we want to talk about those things and uh, we want to see you succeed if you are just coming out of uh, treatment or if you're early in recovery and make sure that you set yourself up to succeed in the importance of relapse prevention and the importance of aftercare and uh, getting out to uh, those support groups uh, that help so many of uh, those people in recovery from alcohol, drugs, gambling, whatever it is, eating disorders, whatever Whatever your addiction or vice may be, the importance of doing something about it, either daily or weekly, is so very important. And of course, it's the third Sunday of the month, and therefore it is Vita Novus month. And uh, joining me as he does every, su every third week of the month is the Executive Director of Vita Novus, John Haynes, the Executive Director. How are you, buddy? Good. Always good to see you. Very good to be here. Now, I understand that uh, there's been a little move Yes. Because you've expanded, yeah. now there's even more beds for you to help people. Correct. Uh, we um, we were very much into uh, living with the idea that people need to be not only in treatment and focused on a new way of living, but also being comfortable, uh, treating them like humans rather than like patients at a hospital, institution, whatever the case may be. I decided to take it a step further and was presented with a, a wonderful uh, facility uh, uh, idea was that uh, the facility wasn't even up for sale and uh, there was the makings of uh, something that I'm sure was uh, very powerful in, in the sense of... A divine appointment perhaps? Correct, very correct. <laughs> and what ended up happening was uh, we ended up with a 55 acre resort type facility now. Uh, that's able to uh, help more people than what we were in, in each contained facility of maybe 10, 10 uh, spots uh, in the estate type setting that we had. Now we've gone on to uh, become uh, a resort type setting with, with activities, with things to do uh, outside of when you're doing your counseling, your, your work, uh, your step works, your you're just recovery and you're able to actually uh, live comfortably as a human yeah a new way of living well it, it, it all as you say the your downtime now you, you have that opportunity to uh, to experience perhaps some things that you in some cases were never able to experience at all mm -hmm. and you, you know I, I I kid around in in uh, w with some people but you know, there, there's a group of fellows that gets together and, and some gals that gets together and play, and play hockey who um, are in the recovery, uh, or in the reco uh, fraternity of recovery. And you know, some of those guys and gals either never got to play as youth or had to stop at a really young age because of either the home front or a single parent situation or finances. And, and these guys and gals are it's like they're they're all renewed in the early part of their program. They find out they can come out and play some hockey or in the summer some baseball and stuff like that. And you know, I know downtown in, in Hamilton there's a program that uh, they can come out and play ball in mm -hmm. the summertime. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know the looks on their faces. Oh, 
it's like they're little kids again. Oh yeah. And and you see that at your place now with Constantly. being able to go out and people. You're going to see it in the in, in your the new 30 second commercial. Yeah. For uh, Vita Novus uh, tonight, you know the they're out there rowing, you know they're 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 seeking or seeing nature. We got a couple of. Uh... <laughs> We've got a couple of good fishermen uh, at our facility right now. Uh, guys know who they are, they're probably watching. And uh, I had to have a fish fry right away. Uh, these guys were catching fish. We've got fully stocked, uh, two, they're pond lake. They're larger than ponds, but they're, they're small lakes and they're stocked with fish. So we've had some good fish eating uh, yes. at, uh, at Vita Novus. And, it's just remarkable, just the the enthusiasm that people bring, and now and then everybody getting up early to, um, um, where 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 is so and so? Well, they're down at the bridge. They're doing a little fishing, and <laughs> wow! Well, tell them breakfast is ready, and uh, we, we're not having fish for breakfast. But uh, yes, it's a renewed uh, regeneration in somebody, just like you said, uh, when they're able to even partake in, in say our volleyball or. Uh, or just uh, some of the serene walks. We've got uh, yep. t over 10 to 12 uh, kilometers of trails. Yep. And then, uh, and then we've also got a labyrinth right on the uh, right on the property that's two kilometers in its own. So, but when you see people that are able to do something other than be in their room, mm -hmm. which again you know, and and, and people that will see the commercial know, the rooms. I mean, I, I give everybody uh, something extra in the sense of their accommodations, like being at a, you know, a, a nice hotel, um, in the sense of having a big screen TV, plasma LCD TVs in their room, full satellite capability uh, for all channel viewing. And um, when they're not uh, working daily on the solution mm -hmm. that we design at Vita Novus, uh, the solution that they're there for and they have other things they can do rather than just yep. be kind of locked in their room or, or to themselves. It gives them time to, to bring everything to fruitation. And, and that's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. Because in, in a lot of cases, I think, you know, for myself, when I, was, when I went to a, a treatment center, uh, really the last thing I wanted to do is spend time with myself. I, I'd been with myself, mm -hmm. you know. That was part of the problem within my addiction, you know. I wanted to be with, I was, I'm, I'm clean and sober now and I, I want to get out and one of the things that a lot of people really liked is where I was, there was a real serene feeling to it. There were these uh, trees and I'm no tree person but they were, the, you know, they had great big branches that came down and you go walk and there's a creek in the place and that's where you found not just the gals but the guys too, you know, cause some people like to read and other people just like to, you know, they, they two, three, four go off at a time and they just sit and they chat. But it was, you know, you, shh, do you hear that? Nothing. Yes. yes. And, and that's what mm -hmm. was just, it was really um, something, something to behold. At, at, our, at our facility, you have that. Yeah. We have nature at its best where we are on our own property. Um, you mentioned Pink Cloud at the start of yep. the program. And Pink Cloud is something that in the program of recovery, is very common to to board uh, when you're going through your your initial stages of recovery, and uh, pink cloud is very important. Well, why not have a better boost to that than have your surroundings and enable you to to get on that plateau, that higher plateau of of your recovery, of the solution that uh, is the ultimate solution to what you're ailing. In what, what, what you're you. ailing yeah. and and the, the idea that the pink cloud can carry you and uh, and you, you spoke about aftercare and you know uh, I'm very big on aftercare well I, I, I think you're setting people up to fail without af without a good aftercare. yeah and and this is why uh, Vita Novus can boast a, a success rate somebody completing treatment has 10 months of follow-up aftercare is so very important that they have that support because as you said, they're in a sheltered cocoon, a safety net, uh, when they're in treatment. Safe. When they're done treatment, 
they have to go back to the real world. The real world that before they couldn't live life on life's terms mm -hmm. and everything that the world was firing at them. And it hasn't stopped. No, it doesn't stop. It, uh, the same things are there and more. Yep. And they have to go back to that. And they're not self-medicating themselves now. Correct. <laughs> they don't have a way around things. No. You know, uh, and, and that's a big thing. So when you spoke of aftercare, it's, it's so but now, But now because of places like yours, they, they're coming back into society with tools yeah. on how to deal with this. But let's, let's face it, before they self-medicated and just zoned out, and, and I say they and because I'm one of them, yeah. you know, we, can, we come back out and we have to deal with life on life's terms, yeah. but we've come out with some, with, with some tools, but now what? Well, now, now you need to be around like people, mm -hmm. and where can you find that? Well, I was lucky enough because I went through two places that I had two aftercares. I got to go two, to, two a week, mm -hmm. Tuesday and Wednesday nights, you'd find me in aftercare. And the other days of the week, I'd be doing other things that helped me, being around like people. In my first, probably my first two years, seven days a week, I was doing something because I was scared spitless, mm -hmm. you know, of what was out there. Anyway, we have to go to a, our first break. Um, the phone lines are, uh, Jeff has them up on the screen. We're talking relapse prevention. We're talking open lines. The lines are open for you to call in and talk about whatever you like. Um, one of the other things I wanted to just throw out there for tonight, if people want to talk about, um, we've talked about the, uh, the whole OHIP type of programs, and I, I, I kind of want to rebroach that with you. Um, and, and also from an abuse standpoint, because with a 45, a 60, 90 day program, which you guys have, um, and, and there's, there's other ones as, as well. And I think those types of the programs, those types of programs are so important. And yours is because I've been able to meet a lot of your clients mm -hmm. and they're awesome. And, and I was able to share with them and, and I, I share my particular story because mine involves sexual abuse as a child. With a 45, 16, and 90 day program, this is where you're able to get to more of the root causes. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the 18, 21 day, you're just beginning to maybe open up and trust. And the importance of a longer program and getting to root causes is something else I wanna talk with you, maybe you do too. So maybe yeah. you have some experiences you want to share. We're talking about uh, alcohol, drugs, gambling, anything, substance abuse, abuse, uh, whatever it may be for you, we'd like to hear from you. One other thing, Living Clean's been on uh, since 2005. Uh, recently, we've been back since April from a, a small hiatus. If, if this show has helped you, and I'm not looking for pats on the back, what I want to know, I'd like you to check back in with us. I'd like you to call in and just say, hey, I'm so-and-so, and, -so and I, called that, I called in in su such and such a time, and this is how I'm doing, okay? I I'm not calling in for thanks or anything like that. I'd like to know how you're doing, mm -hmm. okay? So a whole lot of different things for tonight. The lines are wide open. Please get on them now. We're going to go to a break. As soon as we come back, we're going right to the phones. A couple of lines. Actually, one's still open right now, so get on it, okay? When we come back from this commercial break, and I want you to watch this because this is the Vita Novus brand new commercial back with more living clean right after this statistics state that it is likely you know a victim of abuse it could be a friend a relative a colleague it could even be you one in three girls and one in five boys will be sexually abused before they reach the age of 18. Please give them hope. Help us make it stop. Go to abusehurts.com and give to the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness. Hi, I'm John Haynes. I'm the director of Vita Novus Treatment Centre. We are dedicated to saving lives of the suffering addicts and alcoholics and their families. Our counsellors provide one-on-one -on -one care and the attention that you need, there is never a wait. We have a room available for you now. Give us a call. Your life is worth saving. Every life is worth saving.
And welcome back to Living Clean, Glenn Allen, John Haynes. It's a good commercial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's certainly, I know after these shows, you, you're up because you're in, inundated with, uh, with phone calls. It's, it's like one of, one of those things that, uh, you know, with, I'm at my office in uh, the, the S- Southwestern Ontario office of the CCAA it's located in Stony Creek. And, you know, I, I, I was in my office on uh, Saturday and, uh, you know, I'm in there 17 messages, mm-hmm. you know, on a Saturday. Well, we have Matt back there I'm he keeps yeah. phone in hand. Matt, the solution guy. Yeah. Solution, Matt? I talked to Matt the last time I was there. He was talking about, uh, I, I went in on the Tuesday after the Sunday, and he says, yeah, we were just doing what, what he was doing, just answering the phone calls and, and stuff like that. But yeah. what my point being is um, somebody will say, well, you're really busy. And I said, yeah, it's too bad, isn't it? Yes. Yep. We you know, the same and it, 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 it is. It's a catch-22, but, you know, we're here to help you, and I'm going to be quiet, and I'm going to go to Joshua in Oshawa on line one. Josh, hey. you there? John and Glenn. Hey, how are you? Not too bad, how are you guys? Hi, Good, Josh. Glad, please. Um, I'm Josh from Oshawa, and uh, I was part of John's good program at Vita Nova's house. And yep. uh, it, was a, it is a good program for anybody, especially young to old. And uh, it's, it's very useful. They use, they use the 12 steps very wisely, and they don't break down on it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's an awesome program. Anybody from North, North Ontario to Southern Ontario to East Coast could go there. It's an awesome program. Yeah. Are, are you finished there now, Josh? <clears throat> if you guys want to ask me any questions. <laughs> hey? I said if you guys want to ask me any questions. No, I'm just asking, are you, are you finished there now? Uh, yeah, Josh is. Uh, yeah. Josh just recently graduated. Yeah. Uh, did uh, very well in his program um, with us. Uh, was very receptive. If you remember, and, and, and people that have watched Living Clean for some time, uh, Josh's mother uh, Shay called in um, uh, to the show uh, one week. In fact, uh, the long weekend that we had recently, where we aired a uh, Living Clean aired a, um, a repeat. Oh, yeah. It was where her first call came in, and then she got her son, Josh. On the phone. On the phone the second week when I was yes. on. Yes. Now I and remember. And Josh came into treatment right after that. Right. And yeah. yeah. So he's one of the Living Clean follow-ups, as a matter of fact. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, we had a talk a uh, short while ago, didn't we? We did. We did. How are you doing? I'm doing a lot better. Yeah? A hell of a lot better, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Are you, are you following up on the aftercare? Yep, I'll be going on Tuesday night Yeah. to get uh, my d- diploma and to see how all the guys are and see how John is and everything and to see how I'm doing. Yeah. And I'm doing good. Well, that's great. Uh, it's great to hear a voice of uh, somebody who's gone through. And uh, yes, I do uh, uh, remember Josh. And uh, Josh and I had a, a, a great d- <laughs> uh, discussion uh, the Tuesday that I went in after that, uh, that program. And uh, it ended up being a very, uh, very intense discussion. And in, uh, in those, um, how can I say it? It's, uh, it, it was a point in your recovery that uh, I know that you didn't see coming without getting into any details, but you handled it really well. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, Josh has proved that uh, younger people, which had a very low success rate over many years uh, because the bulletproof attitude, the uh, I don't want to, uh, to do this yet in my life. I've got too much going on right now. I'm still partying. Aren't we supposed to at this age? And, uh, and, and certainly Josh at the age he was at in his latter teens um, uh, was one of those that, that went through, was serious about his program. We've got, as I, I mentioned to you earlier, and, and off air, and now I'll mention it on air, we've got an abundance of the younger ages that are coming through. Yeah. Uh, on first, this. first of all, I'm just going to... Josh, thanks very much for the phone call, buddy. Yeah, thanks, Josh, and we'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, I'll come up some Tuesday and see you. Yeah. So Fine. what had happened was... Um, we know there's an epidemic, I think, on last week you spoke about uh, on your show as well, um, the epidemic of Oxycontin yeah, the opiates, and yeah. addictions uh, to opiates, and, and it's terrible. Um, and right now we're, we're involved with probably 70, 80% of our clientele 
is uh, addicted to Oxycontin and, and, very, and opiates. And uh, I don't think since we've come back, I don't think one show has gone by without an Oxycontin. Correct. Yeah, go ahead, sir. And it's, uh, it's an epidemic. It's actually it been labeled an epidemic in Canada. And, um, and certainly uh, it's, it's hard. It's a hard one. And I've been doing this racket. I call it a racket, but I love it. Mm -hmm. I love this uh, with all, because I'm in recovery, you're in recovery. Yeah, I've been given a gift. Yep. By my uh, yep. by my higher power to yep. to be involved in in my own recovery and to share it, and these uh, young people that are coming now, the ones that are are out there suffering and such, let them know. And it was great to hear from Josh. Let there is recovery available, yep. and there's bigger and bigger groups, support groups, aftercare groups of the younger people. Spiritual Kindergarten is the name of one group in Toronto I can yeah. think of. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's great. Let's go to. Yeah, Terry uh, is on line two in Hamilton. <clears throat> Terry, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, this conversation is going to kind of turn into opposite, real quick. Um, I used to be a drug addict. Okay. And um, have been clean and sober from alcohol for a year and a half, and. My year clean from cocaine was a year and, uh, well, May 6th of 2009. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Good for you. Yes, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. 20 years of drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. I was on the street from age about 14. I cleaned up my life. I'm, on, on, I'm disabled. Uh, I was diagnosed with arthritis at six years old and uh, gotten worse. I have rheumatoid arthritis, bursitis, sciatica, tendonitis, and it's pretty bad. But all the time doing drugs, I would never take a pill. Pills always made me sick. I'm allergic to codeine, allergic to morphine, and every time the doctor put me on pills, it was always a bad situation mm -hmm. where I didn't want to take them. But now I have to because of the pain being so bad. Right. So six years ago, the doctor puts me on this Oxycontin, and I'm prescribed two 20-milligram pills and eight Percocets. This is six years ago. Now, medication has to be increased because it doesn't work the same. You know, I gained 60 pounds after having... Um, muscle spasms, groin pains, can't walk, stuff like that, and the doctor won't increase the medication without you seeing a pain specialist. So he put in a referral for me to see a pain specialist, and I called eight months later and said, like, I haven't got my appointment yet. And she said, well, it takes up to a year to get an appointment. You're just going to have to wait. And I said, okay. My so phone back six months later. And I said, well, where's my appointment? It's been over a year now. And she looks, she says, well, we don't have a referral here for you. So I had to go in and fill out another referral. And it's been another 14 months now. So now it's getting to the point where I can't wait any longer. And I finally I got a hold of the pain clinic myself at the general hospital last week. Good for you. And said... Like, what's going on with this waiting list? She says, the waiting list is two and a half years long. Like, how am I supposed to handle this? Have you talked to your doctor about it? Well, I've got an appointment tomorrow, and I've written him a four-page letter. Because every time I go to talk to him, I can't because I can't talk because I cry. So this time I wrote down what I wanted to say. Because Good. I've come so far from stopping doing drugs, like I'm running my own business now, and I successfully made a prof profit four years running with good my thing. business. And I'm trying to be a good mother and role model for my kids. And all they see is someone who, who cries all the time in no. pain. Terry, are you, are you, are you classifying yourself as addicted to Oxycontin right now? I, I'm 
I'm not addicted to Oxycontin in the sense that I'm getting high on Oxycontin. I have to, if, if I were to get high on Oxycontin, it would mean I'd be getting nauseous because it, I don't know what people see in these drugs, but I know myself that it was never a drug of choice for me because it always made me sick. If I over-medicate, all it does is make me sick. But I am addicted in the sense that these drugs are addictive. And if you run out of medication, you get very sick. So what am I supposed to do? Well, well you're, you're certainly doing the right thing, and, 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 and credit to you for writing everything out and going to see your doctor tomorrow. Um, and advocating for yourself, and that takes a tremendous amount of courage. You're a very strong person, Terry. You're a tremendously strong person. Um, Jeff, if you can, uh, can you put my my phone number up on the screen, please? And I, my phone number will be coming up on the screen, Terry. And you're more than welcome to write that phone number down. Okay, when it comes up, and Jeff will keep it up for for a minute. Okay. And when that number comes up, uh, you just take that down, okay? And if I can help you out at all, uh, you give me a call. I'm located in Stony Creek, okay? And if we need to advocate for you, or if I do, uh, do you mind if I ask you what part of Hamilton you're in? Are there no other pain specialists in the city? Like, I can't understand that. I've even had the children's aid phoning my doctor's office and phoning that pain clinic. And they aren't getting any information. Yeah, Terry, what part of Hamilton are you in? I'm close to Stony Creek. I'm off of Quigley Road. Oh, you're off Quigley? Okay. Do me, do me, do me a favor. You got the number off the screen now? Yep. Okay. Do me a favor. Give me a call after your appointment, okay? Okay? Yep. Okay. You give me a call after your appointment, and then we'll talk. Thanks. Okay? Yep. Okay. Great. Thanks, Terry. Okay, that's great. What a very strong woman. Yes, that's uh, it's tough. It is extremely. What do we what do we have about a minute? Just under a minute. Okay, Jeff, let's uh, let's go to our break now because there's so many phone calls. Um, might as well. Let, yeah, let's let's go to break right now. We're gonna go to break. When we come back, all the lines are full. So uh, yeah, we'll we'll do that right now. You're watching Living Clean. Back right after this break with more of your phone calls. Statistics yeah. state yeah. Like that it is likely you know a victim of abuse. It could be a friend, a relative, a colleague. It could even be you. One in three girls and one in five boys will be sexually abused before they reach the age of 18. Please give them hope. Help us make it stop. Go to abusehurts.com and give to the Canadian Centre for Abuse Awareness. Hi, I'm John Haynes. I'm the director of Vita Nova's Treatment Center. We are dedicated to saving lives of the suffering addicts and alcoholics and their families. Our counselors provide one-on-one -on -one care and the attention that you need. There is never a wait. We have a room available for you now. Give us a call. Your life is worth saving. Every life is worth saving. Is someone else's drinking affecting your life? Does it make you feel angry? Don't yell at me because you're mad at your mom. She's the drunk, not me. Does it make you feel sorry for yourself? Hey, Tanya's drinking again. And maybe next time. Or does it even make you feel frightened? Does Daddy have to drink so much? No matter how you feel, we can help. We're Al-Anon family groups, and we know what it's like. Just call 1-888-4-AL-ANON. To help them, you have to help yourself first. Hi everyone and welcome back to Living Clean. Glenn Allen, John Haynes, uh, Vita Novus. And uh, we're gonna go right back to the to the phones. Uh, Val is on line five from Stratford. Hi Val, how are you? Hi. Go ahead, please. Um, okay, um, I've been with uh, my boyfriend. He's an alcoholic. Okay, um, speak up if you can, okay? Okay, I'm trying. I got a really bad cold. Okay. I've been uh, with my boyfriend who's an extremely bad alcoholic for about three years. Okay. 
he's 43 years old. His father was an alcoholic. He died at a young age, at about 43 or 47. Hmm. And um, my boyfriend's been into rehab in uh, Port Perry for uh, like three times mm -hmm. for seven days, for 21 days. And each time he comes out, um, he, he sustains from drinking for about two to three days. And then he goes back again. Mm -hmm. Now, I've left him a couple of times because of it, because he's um, very verbally abusive yeah. to me. And um, he's uh, been to the hospital down here, and his doctor has said that he suffers from dementia. Um, he's supposed to be taking value in which he does, and... Uh, uh, he takes that for a couple of days, and then he goes back into drinking again, yeah. really. And uh, I've tried a few things with him, and uh, I'm at a loss. <laughs> I don't know, really know what to do. I love him so much, I don't want to leave him permanently, and I want to help him. And uh, I just don't know what to do with for him. He's uh, also been down, I should say, to um, down his brother out in the West Coast, and he quit for 40 days. And um, all of a sudden, he started drinking again. Now, he, he needs a solution. Yes. And uh, and I think you made it fairly clear that uh, he's ta he's partaken some of the 21 day program. Am I correct? Yes. And uh, it might be time to look at longer term. Uh, Glenn spoke uh, as well about uh, earlier saying that you can barely touch on on starting with a solution in 21 days uh, you're f you're just collecting your bearings you're starting to you know uh, peel back the onion and get to the root if that yeah if, if that i mean it's a you can you can go ahead but i i just want to pipe in i mean 20, 21 days i mean for somebody who who, who is uh who's trying to get uh sober um, you know, if, if he's, I don't know if he's going to detox first, but, uh, you know, when you're going into a 21 or an 18 day program, I mean, the first week is, um, a, probably a blur for him. And then he's there for two weeks. Basically it's a, uh, you're, you're drying out and, uh, it, you know, it, it probably is that time for him to go into a, a longer, a longer treatment program. Um, and certainly a, a place where, where he can work on himself if he's willing to work on himself, and and, and really get into uh, uh, get into the the issue of uh, you know he grew up with uh, you say an alcoholic father, so I'm sure there there are issues there. His dad died very young. I'm sure there's really a lot of unresolved issues there, and you say that the doctor says that he's suffering. Well, I'm sorry, the doctor said he's suffering what? From dementia. So, I mean, he's dealing with a uh, start of Corsakoff, possibly. Yeah. So, from drinking. Go ahead. does he drink a lot, Val? Like, uh, is uh, he. Oh, yeah, severely. Uh, are we talking, you know, in the neighborhood of, of a bottle a day? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, he's probably uh, also experiencing uh, acute withdrawal from, from that much alcohol. Tell you what, um, if Jeff can flash up my uh, our number again, Val. Um, Give us a call. Give me a call, and and I'll tell you some avenues that you'll that you'll be able to do. You're obviously uh, set in the way of finding something. You're sticking by, by him in the sense of trying to to find a solution. Give us a call. We've got a solution for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Val. We're gonna uh, I'm gonna go to line four. Uh, Jack is on the line in Ottawa. Jack on line four from Ottawa. Jack, how are you? Uh, doing so-so. I still have a problem with alcohol. Okay. And I'm on Valium, and I mix the both. I drink about maybe seven cans of beer a day, and I pop about six hits of the Valium. And then I go out and meet the guys in the park and we drink there. I don't drink the Indian wine anymore or the rubbing alcohol or the Listerine. They they drink that stuff. I don't drink it anymore. Okay. But, you know, 
I just need some advice. Like, you know, like my family is totally distanced me. Yeah, like I just, my birthday was last Thursday. And they said we want nothing to do with you. Jack, you, you've called in here before, right? A long time ago. Long time ago, yeah. I remember you. Okay. Yeah. And I'm on disability. Yeah. Advice you have for him. Well, I'll tell you what, Jack. Um, do you have access to the Internet? Yes, I do. Okay, there's a... Um, I want you to look up uh, drugrehab.ca. Yeah. And, uh, and and again, that deals with alcohol and drugs. And uh, phone their helpline. It's free. And uh, they're able to place you by need. Um, we use, uh, they, they call us all the time. They're one of our main lines. And, and certainly there's, uh, they can give you a solution to reach somewhere. What type of Valium are you taking uh, with, with, with your drinking? Is it clonazepam, diazepam, lorazepam? Which one is it? Clonazepam. Okay, so it's the, it's, it's the, the largest of them in the, in the sense of dosage, in the sense of effect. Um, yeah, what, what you need to do, Jack, is, is give them a call um, uh, after you look on the, on the Internet, uh, just because I don't have the number on the top of my head, otherwise I'd give it to you. And there's Frank, Ryan, great bunch of guys. Uh, give them a call, and, and they'll find you somewhere. Are you willing to go to treatment? Yeah, I am. Okay, good. Give them a call, okay? I'm 51 <laughs> now, Yeah. and uh, I can't stand it anymore. Well, you know what, Jack? I mean, the, the, the advice is there, and, and, and please, please, uh, you know, go to that website, and uh, the help is there. Thanks very much for the call. Line six is Hugh in Toronto. Hugh, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Please go ahead. Um, I had the privilege before I met John in Toronto one time at a, at a meeting through a, a good friend of his from years ago. Um, what I'm calling for is uh, uh, my youngest son, uh, right now he's, uh, he's residing at uh, St. Joe's Detox, and he needs uh, help very, very, uh, he needs help uh, in a great uh, great way. Um, he has problems with his drinking and uh, crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering that, uh, if there's any facilities like uh, John has and how long is it for? Like I met John there one time before and I, I, I know I heard him speak about it but I, I didn't see the place myself personally. But uh, my son does need uh, out of town uh, out, of, out of Toronto, away from his friends, uh, or his so-called friends, I guess. Yeah. Um, he thinks they're his friends until they find out. Myself, personally, I, I'm, a, I'm a recovering addict. I have a nine-month sobriety myself. Uh, right now, I'm residing in uh, Transistor House in that Harbor Light in Toronto here. And I just finished a program at St. Michael's Homes. And uh, I'm very, very concerned for my son. And... Uh, he does, he's in, uh, like I said, he's in St. Joe's Detox right now. He went in there yesterday. And they only hold you for a certain time. And uh, I was just wondering uh, how long this program is for and uh, how can he uh, find out more, more information about it. I'll tell you what, Hugh, he's probably not in a position today himself to give us a call. How old is he? He's 21 years old. Okay, I'll tell you what, Hugh. Um, Again, if Jeff can flash back to our number. Did you write that number down, Hugh? I got uh, 905-888-8482. Correct, and, and that won't be long distance for you from Toronto where you are. Give me a call tomorrow. Okay. And you and I will talk. Okay, my friend. Thanks, bud. It's good to see you. Good to see you and hear from you. Call. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the phone call, Hugh, and congratulations to you too. Yes. All righty, well, let's go to uh, Mississauga. John is on line eight. John, how are you doing? Oh, uh, not doing too bad. Good. Um, Welcome to the show. Go ahead. It was a great help after I got out of a program I was in for, like I said, I was there for almost 40 days. But it was a 21-day program, but it took a little while for me to get into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's my, natural. My question is, I have an appointment. I've been having a lot of problems with alcohol lately. Um, the other, you know, I'm a, I'm a recovering addict and alcoholic. Um, I have an appointment with Credit Valley. Uh, Credit Valley Hospital has a rehab program. 
mm-hmm. and I want to enter it back into a program. Uh, and I know myself that it has to be a residential program where um, I'm removed from where I am. How do you like? How do you determine which one's good for you? Like the program I was in, it was great. Um, I'd like to go back there, but uh, it, it obviously didn't work for the alcohol side of things. What? If I can. Yeah, go ahead. John, um, the, the idea isn't that it didn't work for alcohol or it didn't work for drugs. Um, it's, it, may, it just maybe wasn't the right program for you because, it, it, again, we, you have to work on a program that works with the solution and the solution you're looking for that will work for you. So what you need to do is you, just like you're saying, you're reaching out right now. This is the first step, as, as, as I'm sure that since you uh, have gone through a program, your first step is admitting you still have a problem. And you want to do something about that problem is, is, is important because there's a lot of people that know they have a problem, but they don't want to do anything about it. Uh, they want to just uh, continue, uh, you know, not uh, living in the problem, not living in the solution. That's right. So what I, what I suggest you do is, uh, is again, if you'd like, Phone, uh, phone my uh, my center, either myself or or Matt or uh, lovely Linda. Linda's um, yeah, she's manning phones lately. I've been so busy as well. Uh, however, um, you'll get one of us on the phone, and we'll talk, and we'll probably be able to either steer you in the right direction, or uh, maybe we can uh, let you know what's available for you at Vita Novas. All right, that'd be great to hear all, from you. All right. I'll be looking forward to hear from you, John. Thanks a lot, and have a great okay. night. Take Thanks, care. John. That's John from Mississauga. We have four? Two? Okay, well, let's go to uh, two. Let's go to Wayne on line seven in Toronto. Wayne, how are you? Hello. Yep, go ahead, please. Uh, how are you guys doing tonight? Good, thank you. You? Uh, not too good, guys. Uh, no? No, I was sober for... Uh, 15 years and uh, I had a great job uh, I worked at uh, Seton House in Toronto for 15 years with the homeless I took that course uh, years ago down at George Brown College for addiction human services counseling program and uh, I've got rheumatoid arthritis I was listening to that lady earlier on in the program talking about her uh, arthritis and stuff I've got rheumatoid arthritis I've had it for 26 years. I'm uh, 56 now, and uh, I've had it half of my life now, and I'm uh, I'm disabled now. Like I can't even work. I've had knee replacements, uh, shoulder replacements, and operations on <laughs> my feet all over the place. You know. Yeah. And I'm in chronic pain. I've been in, in chronic pain for you know 25 years. Every day I've been in pain. And finally, uh, I couldn't take it anymore. I went to my doctor about uh, 10 years ago, I guess, and they put me on uh, Percocet. Uh, this was like 10 years ago. And uh, and I started taking Percs 10 years ago. I was uh, still going to meetings, and I tried to, you know, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't take the pain anymore. I just had to take something for the pain. It was driving me insane. I couldn't work or I couldn't do anything. So then, it, but it led to other other uh like the percocets didn't work after a while and i had to go on uh, higher uh a more uh dangerous drug uh, morphine and uh i've been on morphine now for five years and uh i've like i've lost everything in the last five years i, I lost my job i lost my home you know i i, I was a you know pretty successful guy uh and uh, now i'm living in a like a rooming house in Toronto, you know, I had a beautiful house in Port Perry. I've lost all the material things in life. And uh, right now I'm losing my life because I'm losing this, bal- this battle against this addiction. I, uh, I, Like I said, I'm 56 and, uh, you know, I've been uh, doing this morphine for five years now. And uh, I, just, I just lost all hope. Like after a while, the pain just... You know, I got fed up with the pain, and I stopped going to meetings. And uh, and uh, when me and my wife split up, I just said to hell with it. And uh, you know, 
But I ended up picking up a drink too, and then drink started drinking again after 15 years with not a drop of alcohol. And uh, right now, like if I keep going the way I'm going, I'm going to die for sure. I know I'm going to die. I've got high blood pressure, and uh, I'm in bad shape. And uh, I just don't know what to do anymore. Like I, I know meetings are the answer, but uh, I just, you know, there's really, I just make excuses for not going. You know, I talk to my ex-wife. She goes all the time, and uh, she seems to be doing great still. She's got, you know, 20 years sobriety now. But I just can't get my butt in gear to get to get up and go to a meeting anymore. And uh, I don't know. Maybe you guys got some suggestions. I don't know. Wait, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. The uh, the perks and the morphine both are prescribed. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't take Percodon anymore. I'm oh, no. on morphine. You, you do, you, and it's still prescribed. Oh yeah, yeah, it's all prescribed. Okay. Um, then you and you picked up a you picked up a drink and you've been drinking a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and you've gone through some, you, you've gone through the bad times and you've lost a lot. Uh, but you're still here, right? Yeah, barely. <laughs> oh, I I I know. You have 15 years experience of being clean and clean, right? Yeah. Sober. Yeah, that's right. Right. So you have a lot of you have a lot of experience to draw from, correct? Mm-hmm. Right. I just, uh, I just can't uh, seem to get back in the, the you okay. know, in the groove of going to meetings. Okay. Well, just just follow me. Just follow me for a second. Okay. You got 15 years. Okay. And you sound like somebody when you had your 15 years. You sound like somebody who was pretty no-nonsense and, and did pretty well, correct? Yeah, that's right. Eric. Okay, all right, because I, I, can, I can tell that. You can tell that, right? Mm -hmm. You can tell that. You, know, you, you sound like a no-nonsense person, no -nonsense person who, who did very well. So you have 15 years to draw from of knowing what, what you're supposed to do, right? And I bet you that you can recall how you felt during those times, right? Oh, yeah, like... You know, it took a couple of years to get out of the fog, I'm telling you. Yeah. I, oh, bad, you know, it took me two years to get out of the fog, but I, after that I started feeling, you know, like uh, I used to sit in meetings and I'd, my, my hands would be clenched, I, you know, I'd be in fear all the time. And Why? After about two years of going to meetings, it, it, that went away. You know, I just kind of relaxed and my life started getting better and better and better going to the meetings and then... You know, I just threw it all away, and I'm so mad at myself. Uh, you know, I'm just I, I despise myself right now. Okay, Wayne, I, I wish I hope you're recording this. You're probably not, but everything that you just said right there is the reason that all you have to do is get up and go to a meeting now. Everything that you said right there is the reason that you get up and you go to a correct. Yeah. Everything that you just said right there, I'm sure you've told to other people who came along after you and who you've helped many, many times over the years because as soon as you get your button gear and you go to one, you know that two comes easier, three comes even more, I was going to say more easier. That's, uh -oh. that's, that's wrong English. However it comes out. You know what, Wayne? If, if, you, need, if you need a friend for, through this, I, I know there's some guys in Toronto, but if if you want, if I have to, I will dry, I will pick you up, and I will take you. Okay. You know I need I need a boost. I need a kind of boost right now. Like. Well, I got a size 11 that I'm not doing anything with. So. <laughs> I know a lot of people in in the program. Uh, I phoned a few people and. Uh, what did Wayne? What do you think they would do if you picked up the phone and said, "Listen, I want to go." Uh, well, they, I know some of them would come and pick me up. Like I'm downtown now, kind of, and they're yeah. out in. Uh, but but let's let's cut through, Wayne. Let's cut through the chase. What do you think if your brothers and sisters in that particular fraternity came? Uh, you said that you needed to go and you needed to save your life and you needed them to come pick you up. What would they do? Well, they probably would, but I, you know, I, I, I to tell you the truth, I've had. What really threw me off was uh, I was started going to meetings a couple of years ago. I started going back, and this old sponsor of mine that I knew for years 
this guy, I couldn't believe what happened to this guy. He committed suicide. He, the, the guy was doing fantastic. He had a business in Mississauga. He had like 20 years sobriety, and they found him hanging in his garage. Like I, and I just started going back to meetings with this guy. You know what I mean? I, I only had like three weeks or four weeks, and, this, and the, he, he commits suicide. This really good friend of mine that I'd known for 20 years, you know, okay. in, mm -hmm. inside Wayne, the program. Hang on. I got, I got a book. Okay. Hey, Wayne, you do me a favor? Because yeah. this, this is a conversation that in, in the, we have to go to a break and we have other callers we have to get to before the end of the show. I'm going to ask that you get put on hold, okay? And would you do me a favor? Is it okay if, uh, if I call you as soon as the show is over? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, or can I call you in the morning? Can, is there a number I can call back to? Because uh, the guy that I live with, he's sleeping. He's got to go to work tomorrow. Okay. Do you want to talk tonight? Yeah, sure. Okay, you you call back at the number that you called into, okay, at twelve thirty-five. Okay, what what is that number again? I forgot it. Um, Jeff will put it back up on the lot. There it is, um, the four one six number. Okay, four one six. All right. Two zero three. Actually, you know what? If you want to stay on hold, they can just keep you on hold. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Okay, Appreciate okay, thanks. thanks, Jeff. Okay, so they got you on hold. And uh, Jeff, thanks very much. We'll go to break. And uh, when we come back, we'll get to our last callers. You're watching Living Clean, making a difference in people's lives. Be right back. Statistic state. That it is likely you know a victim of abuse. It could be a friend, a relative, a colleague. It could even be you. One in three girls and one in five boys will be sexually abused before they reach the age of 18. Please give them hope. Help us make it stop. Go to AbuseHurts.com and give to the Canadian Center for Abuse Awareness. Hi, I'm John Haynes. I'm the director of Vita Nova's Treatment Center. We are dedicated to saving lives of the suffering addicts and alcoholics and their families. Our counselors provide one-on-one -on -one care and the attention that you need, there is never a wait. We have a room available for you now. Give us a call. Your life is worth saving. Every life is worth saving. And welcome back to Living Clean. Glenn, John, and uh, just a few minutes. So we're gonna go right to Don. Uh, in Hamilton on line one. Hi Don, how are you? Hello. Hi, go ahead please. Um, I have an addiction problem to marijuana. To marijuana, okay, go ahead please. And I'm just wondering if you have people in treatment that just have that addiction problem. Go ahead. Sure do. And uh, how long is the treatment? A drug is a drug. It's a minimum of 45 days, Don, um, because any drug is uh, a mind-altering substance and, and it's if you're addicted to it, there's a reason you're addicted to it. We'll get to the reason and start you on a solution to, to not be addicted to marijuana anymore. Does that sound pretty easy? That does. Um, just uh, when I, you know, tell people that that's my addiction, they think I'm crazy for not at all mm -hmm. wanting to go to rehab. And do you know of any like um, group therapy for just rehab in the Hamilton area? I'm sorry. Like a um, like a facility for in Hamilton for like a group therapy just drop-in kind of therapy? Do they have that or? For, for drugs? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's called Narcotics Anonymous or Cocaine Anonymous, which encompasses everything, any drug. Okay. Just they're, they're meetings okay. where people go and either hear someone speak or you can go to, uh, there's meetings where uh, people discuss their, their problems and they help each other. It's, a, it's like a peer support. That's basically what those meetings are. And, um, but yeah, you can, uh, uh, that's on your screen there. And uh, uh, Jeff can put my office number up again, uh, which is located in Sony Creek. And if you want to give me a call, I'll be in the office tomorrow afternoon. And if I can give you any more help or suggestions, I'd be happy to. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, Don. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, line three, Ari in Toronto. Ari, how are you doing? Hey, how are you guys doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't actually. I don't have a question. I just wanted to share some experience. Um, I know a lot of people are calling in with uh, questions, and a lot of people are in pain. I just wanted to share that uh, I'm doing really well. Like, yeah. been uh, really good. I've been sober for, sober for almost seven years now. Good. And uh, yeah, 26. I actually came into the program when I was 15. Um, I was struggling for quite some time. And, um, yeah, after uh, just kind of getting my feet into meetings and going consistently um, and doing all the things that I was told, I, uh, uh, I'm doing really well. Ari, that's great. Um, and and that's, uh, that's something that, uh, you know, we need to hear. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to you and thanks very much for that uh, phone call because it's, uh, you know, we're getting late into the program and, and we're going to take our last call in just a second. Um, did he say 15? Did you say 15? I think he's, he's gone? gone now, yeah. 15? Yeah, he's seven years, so he's wow. 22 years old. Wow, wow. That's uh, a, that's Because be. you have a young group in right now. Actually, let's get Nancy on, okay. and yep. then if we have time, we'll talk about okay. that on here. Nancy is uh, on line two in Oshawa. Nancy, how are you? Hi, Glenn. Yes? Yeah, uh, you might remember me. I called in quite a while ago. Okay. I'm, uh, uh, my husband's in the program. Yes. Now, he just celebrated 31 years on June 28th, mm -hmm. and we celebrated 13 years uh, of being married. We got married on his dry date. Oh, very good. And, but I wanted to tell you about these people calling in about pain clinics. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I'm a cancer patient. Yes. And I struggled with this for a long time. I've got, I had bladder cancer, bowel cancer, gallbladder cancer, you name it, I had it. Okay. But I went through a pain clinic, and they put me on a minimum of uh, a drug called uh, 4 milligrams of Dilata, which is half, less than half a mil. Now, this drug just keeps me comfortable that I can have a life. Because before I was run to the hospital for pain, and it was just a nightmare. Since I've been on this, I've had a life. I've gone to meetings with my husband, and I'm doing, I'm not on the couch 24-7. I have a life. And I just want to tell these people, just keep the faith and, and hang in there and do talk to your doctor and push it because they're, they're, they can get you in there before a year. Yeah. Nancy, thanks so much for that. And congratulations to your husband and to both of you. And uh, I do remember you. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. Uh, there, there, she says there's hope that she got off the pain medication, got on something that's good for her. Yeah. You know, it's important to know that being prescribed this because you'll hear you hear a lot of this when you're prescribed a pain medication which is, as i mentioned earlier it's an epidemic however there are lots of people that use their prescription uh, responsibly mm -hmm. and uh, never have a problem with it uh, and they manage the pain and, and they take it over the time to various steps and end up uh, getting over it however the unfortunate side to that is that it becomes addictive it's not so much anymore for the pain, and they're certainly not using it as prescribed. So that's when it comes down to. Uh, it's, it's a matter of, uh, you know, what, where are you at in your life, yeah. and what are you doing? That's it. That's it. Yeah. And uh, really quickly, uh, inside 30 seconds, uh, we have, you, you, you have a lot of young guys in your place. Young. Yeah. And you know what? That's good. It it's is. good because it's a switch. And I'm, uh, I, I'm glad to see that, uh, you know what, uh, they're stepping up. They're doing something about it now so they can enjoy a rich, full life. Yeah. Okay, and not wait till, I mean, I had to, I had to wallow in my pain of, of addiction for probably 10, 15 years that I didn't need to if I would have went in early. That's right. Yep. And we always want to remind people that please don't ever give up before that miracle happens. And why? Because it's amazing. That's right. Absolutely amazing. For John, me, and everyone here at Living Clean, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again next week. Living Clean has been brought to you by Vita Novus Treatment Center and Addictions 911. Living Clean is a presentation of the Canadian Center for Abuse Awareness.